It's all about having the key insights, following the leaders of the crypto industry and background stories on blockchain technology trends to keep you one step ahead. Monty Metzger, CEO of LCX.com, keeps you up to speed with what's moving global crypto markets and gives you the latest insights about LCX's platform and ecosystem. This is LCX Insights Live. Welcome to LCX Insights Live. It's June 24th, 2021, and I'm super thrilled and excited to welcome you all to this special session. So in our live video shows, I'm engaging with the world's top blockchain projects, entrepreneurs and investors and pioneers in crypto and blockchain in honest conversation meant to challenge traditional ways of thinking. My name is Monty Metzger. I'm founder and CEO, CEO at LCX.com. LCX is a regulated fintech company that focuses on digital asset trading, compliant token offerings, and tokenization. We have recently received eight blockchain-related approvals by the Liechtenstein regulator, more than any other company uh, in the country. And Liechtenstein is a small country, the sixth smallest country in the world, but a financial powerhouse. It's located next to, uh, to Switzerland and Austria, landlocked. They're approximately one hour drive from Zurich. Liechtenstein is known um, because it has received this triple A rating from Standard & Poor's, the highest rating as a country which you can get. But even more important, Liechtenstein has introduced the most forward-thinking legal framework for cryptocurrencies and blockchain companies, providing legal clarity for our users and security for us as a company as well. So that's very important. Liechtenstein really stands out and a key USP uh, is that they invested to this regulatory standards from early on. So there was a working group since 2017, 18, the first draft was uh, coming out. And then since uh, 1st of 2020, the laws are in full force. Today's show title is how blockchain and NFTs are turning gamers into investors. And today's guest is the former CEO of Atari Group and now runs the blockchain division at Atari, which also includes Atari Token and Atari Chain. He is a graduate of the Institute of Political Studies in Paris and has a degree in finance and law. He began his career as a financial advisor and practiced as a lawyer specializing in mergers and acquisition. He then worked for Lazard Bank from 1995 to 2000. And then from 2001 on, he was a member of the Tari Group's management team. First as a group chief operating officer and later as CFO, uh, and then even as CEO of Atari Interactive. In 2007, he left Atari to create his own video game company, and in 2013, he became the largest shareholder of Atari Group by purchasing Atari shares. So back in the Atari Group. And uh, now lately, um, he is the creator and uh, the mastermind be behind the Atari token and Atari chain. So please welcome Mr. Frederick Chisnez. Oh, Fred, where are you? Here you are. Hi. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Great to have you on the show. It uh, will be very interactive. So I first have to open up for the community and say we want your questions. You can comment on YouTube or LinkedIn um, and then the questions will appear here. We'll pick the best questions and then ask to uh, either Fred or me on any topic you want. Uh, Fred, let's get started right away. Can you tell us what um, do you currently focus on and what's the status of Atari token? How big is everything you do in the blockchain operations over there? Uh, yeah, sure. Th thanks for having me again. Hi, everyone. Um, so, you know, we have there are many things to do on a blockchain project and especially a blockchain project like the Atari token. Uh, but if you just want to make progress, you have to keep it very, very simple. So today we have three priorities. Um, first on the token, it is uh, to have more and more use cases. Um, we already have some. 
out there, we were definitely adding and working on some additional use cases such as NFTs, um, but that's definitely one big priority. Uh, the second big priority is to add more liquidity, so to say more opportunities for the token, the Atari token to be listed. Uh, so liquidity, just to make it simple. And then uh, three, uh, but this is uh, this, this was announced on June 7. Um, I am working through a license. I'm working on the Atari um, Metaverse, the online digital world uh, branded Atari. And mm -hmm. these are really the, the first, uh, the three priorities. Short term use cases with more NFTs, more games, more liquidity, and then uh, a longer term project, which is the, the Atari Metaverse. And so before we dive into all these exciting products and the metaverse and, and, and so on, can you give us an overview of the Atari group and the Atari blockchain activities with the token and the chain? How does it all fit together? So Atari has basically three big um, divisions. One is uh, games, but software. The second one is the, the Atari video computer system, the new computer. This is hardware. The third big division is licensing. So it is, uh, you know, using the brand, developing the brand in movies, in TV shows, T-shirts, or everything we don't do in apps. And then uh, the, the last one is the, the, the blockchain piece, which is the Atari token, the, everything uh, Atari does on the blockchain. So these are the basically, you know, high, from a high level, uh, these are the four businesses of Atari. Excellent. And now, like when you look at the current um, infrastructure you've built, coming to the core question here, how will blockchain and NFTs in fact um, impact the gaming industry and how will gamers be turned into investors? What's your take on this? Yeah, so uh, first, I'm not sure that gamers will become investors because these are just two different um to very, very different notions, right? Uh, when you play, you play. When you invest, uh, you don't play. <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure I would use that uh, association of words. But I think for me, the most um, the most important factor is, of course, the NFT by itself. Mm -hmm. In uh, the easiest way to compare and see what the potential is, 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 the, is the following. When you, if you compare what you do when you spend money in, a, in an Apple, let's say, uh, a game you, you've downloaded from the App Store, or if you uh, spend money and if you have uh, if you have purchased one NFT, I think it's very, very different. You're doing it, of course, for the same reason, because you want to make progress in the game. It's really for convenience. But at the same time, I believe that, you know, you have more flexibility if you end up uh, buying an NFT than if you just end up buying some uh, in, in app tokens. In a, in a mobile game. And the main, main difference, uh, there are two, two main sets of differences. One is on the one end, when you buy the NFT, you have a basically a, a, a re, not a resale, but you can use it multiple times, or at least you can transfer it to somebody else, which is not usually the case in a mobile app. So having an NFT is very uh, interesting from a gameplay perspective and also from what you're buying. And the second advantage, of course, is the fact that you can trace and you, the NFT, you know how many NFTs you have, you can collect them, it's for sure. You know, when you collect, uh, if you collect, if you're in the US, if you collect baseball cards, or if you're in Europe, if you collect Panini cards with uh, soccer players, you don't know really how many cards are out there. But with an NFT, you know, you know exactly how many uh, cards are out there, you know exactly what you can do with them. So that's for me is really the game changer. And this is why I'm not saying all the games will be on the blockchain, but I think even main games uh, should at one point in time include a blockchain layer just to make sure that it's, it's more fun to collect, you know, to have a piece of a building, in a, in a, in, even in a city building game, knowing that you have one building out of um, 5,000, it's, it's more fun than just having a building, um, you know, and you don't know how many buildings are out there. So I think this is why blockchain is going to change big time or small time. But I think blockchain is going to change a lot of things in the in the game, in the game uh, experience. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree. I think the, the whole blockchain space is revolutionizing gaming because there already had been this interaction, sometimes even with virtual currencies already in some games. 
And uh, so that's why um, your vision is really innovating the whole space and you're, you're leading on, on so many areas there. Um, now, explaining, I'd, I'd like to go back to the, to the token first and then um, go into kind of your roadmap. Can you explain to the audience, what is the Atari token? What do you, did you create there? Uh, well, first, it's, uh, it's an ERC-20 token. Uh, so it's on Ethereum. The, the, goal, the goal behind the token is, um, is quite simple. We had two options. Uh, we could have said, we're going to create a, a plan, not a platform, we're going to create a, a website, an application, and it will be only on that website, but you will find your joy games, and it, it will be only on that website, but you will find some use cases for the Atari token. Uh, that was one option. The other option, and this is definitely the one we took, um, the other option was, okay, let's make sure because Achoy is a mass market brand, Achoy is well known, let's make sure that we have, of course, with some form of control, right? But let's make sure that we have the Atari games all over the place, you know, in as many um, applications or on as many websites as possible. And let's make sure that back to the not resellability, but the fact that if you buy an NFT, you can then use it multiple times. Let's make sure that if I earn some Atari tokens playing one game on that uh, website or in that game, in that application, I can reuse the same Atari tokens somewhere else. And this is why our goal, we decided to go with the second option to create an ecosystem where you have a lot of Atari games and then uh, out there, some we operate, some we don't, or some we operate under license. And then having also a token, which you can earn on, on one website in one application, and then you can reuse in another application. And I think going with the second option was more natural for us because everyone knows the brand. And we thought that we would go much quicker, much faster. And with the help of the community, we would be able to reach a higher level, so to say, of penetration and uh, 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 and grow the ecosystem much faster if we were to do like this. So this mm -hmm. is what, why we decided to to go with a, with an open so we say mechanism. Excellent. And I think looking at the at the token, there is a description here on your website. I'm just sharing the screen here with the liquidity in the in the middle, smart contract security, easy integration, skills, and much much more on the side. Can we can you explain why skills matter and how this play to earn model works or how it, it has been implemented or it will be implemented? Yeah, uh, I, I think, you know, the, um, the, the skill based system is, uh, is very important because you're going to see, especially with the Atari, uh, with the Atari tokens and with blockchain, you're going to see a lot of skill based gaming, a lot of competition. Um, game of Pong, you know, everyone knows the game of Pong. Um, you bet one, I bet one, and the winner walks away with 190 and the platform keeps 10. I think you're going to see more and more of these uh, types of games because this is really, you know, uh, a very useful and very powerful case for a, a blockchain-based game. I think this is why skills matter. Um, you're going to see esports. I think it's going to become more and more important. You know, back in the day, we used to, to pay, right, to play. Now it's free to play. And I think tomorrow it's going to be more you get paid <laughs> when you play. Yeah. So that's just, you know, the way it works. And uh, this is just very natural. So when so I look when at, I your, at your website, there's a, there's a good um, question here already coming in, which I think now is the right time to bring it up from Vasile. Minko, I know a lot of wallets already support the Atari token, but will you develop... Uh, your own um, wallet? Uh, short answer is yes. It's, uh, it's, I think we just released it uh, this morning on the website. So what we are doing, you see you have it here, the smart wallet. Um, it was made live this morning, not for this interview, but just because we wanted the community to test it and check it. Um, so yes, the, the short answer is yes. Yeah, so here it is. Welcome to the Atari Smart Wallet app. And uh, you said, so this had been going live this morning. So the answer here is yes, it's there. 
Um, is it already for download or is that a preview? Uh, it's it's already for a, it's a preview and then we've submitted for downloads uh, to to the App Store. Uh, mm -hmm. so, but the uh, the Android version should be uh, already live. Yes. And there's also what we've started to do is a decentralized exchange. So you see, um, it should be live right now. Um, so you can basically swap some crypto um, very easily. And we're going to keep adding some pairs from time to time. Our goal is not to become a big platform, but just to show for convenience and to offer some uh, very simple way, very, very limited fee uh, to, to offer some simple ways to swap tokens. Yeah, I think the... Yeah, the DEX is not fully live yet. It's still uh, password no. protection yeah. behind, but I see that it's announced here. So probably in the next minutes or so, it will yeah. go live. Um, so, and that's uh, uh, developed from scratch or like a DEX fork uh, from, from something else? No, it's a, the team developed it. It was easier for them to do it that way. Okay. But now, Fred, you mentioned the Atari Metaverse. Can you explain what is the Atari Metaverse to the community? Sure. So um, it's a longer term project. Um, I've been involved in many online worlds, which were not on the blockchain. Um, survival games, zombie games, um, horror games, online persistent world. So I've always, you know, pushed for that online. I call it the multiverse because there's going to be multiple universes, but I've always pushed for that uh, online world because i'm very comfortable with it and i believe that this is you know going to be a good experience so this is why for instance we have granted some licenses to to sandbox and decentraland but i wanted just to do it my own way uh, so on june the 7th it was announced that um i tried granted the license to one of the companies i control i stayed myself i, re, uh, I resigned from the board because i wanted just to make sure i had no conflict of interest um but i'm you know i've been working on it um i've been thinking about it for a long time and i'm really working on it because i, I have like basically a free cards but i'm trying to my goal is to deliver a world that is not only about atari mm -hmm. um meaning there will be a natural universe, but my goal is also to deliver more universes, right? Uh, branded, not branded. Um, I've, I've already secured more brands than Atari. So yes, if there's going to be an Atari multi uh, metaverse, but in, in that big world, they're going to be a series of different universes and they will not have the same look and feel. I think the problem right now I see with some of the uh, metaverses out there is that they by definition, by, by construction, they look the same. Uh, so my idea, my what I'm trying to, to, I would try to deliver is more basically a hub with different universes and uh, each of them will have a different look and feel. Mm -hmm. So what's the uh, roadmap here? Um, when you say like that's a, a pure, like a vision, a business plan, when was it started? What's the kind of roadmap and timeline for this? So I have not announced any any um, open date for uh, an alpha or better a better launch. Um, right now, what I have is we we've announced the deal. The structure is in place. I have hired the developers. We we are raising some money, but I, I have hired the developers. We are working and finalizing. You know, it's not going to be long because everything was pretty much uh, in my head. Um, we are working the on the. We're finalizing the design, and we should be able to make some announcement um, very likely around Labor Day in the in the US, which is in in six weeks, well, eight weeks. Okay, exciting, yeah. But um, probably one one step back. I mean, you are with Atari since such a long time, uh, and also know the company and the transformation it has been going through. What, in your perspective? What is the value of the Atari brand as of today? I think it's it's a community driven uh, brand. Meaning, when you when you go into an Atari website, uh, it's because you you know you're going to meet people who like the same thing, uh, the same things like the, the the one you like, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, the brand really means entertainment, technology, and evolution uh, or revolution, but with a little arc, but you just have to stay uh, humble, right? But 
it's entertainment, technology, and evolution. So everything that's new that combines uh, entertainment and tech, this is, uh, you know, for me, this is the meaning of the Atari brand. And what people don't really understand, I think, is, um, you know, as a consumer, you think, oh, that's easy. We can just do a game in a few weeks. And at the end of the day, unless you've been in the business, you don't really understand what it takes. Um, and yes, some, if you look at games that have been released or announced and not released, um, or when you have bugs um, in games, on, especially online games, it's, um, it's very important to understand what is going on. Uh, and yes, you can have studios testing the game with maybe 1,000 players, but when you have 10,000, 100,000 players, it's not the same uh, type of game. And you have different mm -hmm. stress, uh, uh, so we say systems, regimes, it's, it's, it's just completely different. And, and yes, sometimes things break. So I think when you go to, a, to an Atari uh, you know, website, I'm also expecting that people understand that, yes, it's nice, it's a great brand, entertainment, evolution, technology, any, in any order. Yes, we're trying to, to innovate, but at the same time, people make mistakes and people just, it takes time and it's very difficult. You don't, I think, unless again, you've been a, a programmer, a developer, been, been part of a tech team or a development team, people don't understand what it takes just to, to deliver a game. Um, I'm not saying this only for Atari, I'm saying this for all the developers in the world, that uh, you know, people they put a lot of a heart in, uh, in what they are doing. And yes, sometimes it works, sometimes it fails. And sometimes they're early, sometimes most of the time they would be more late than early. Um, but I would expect also when people join the Atari website that uh, they understand that type of things. And it's very, very, very difficult to make again, don't get me wrong. Okay. And, and so you're uh, kind of developing on, on several levels and you mentioned the NFTs also play an important role and you made an exciting announcement uh, recently. So we saw the Atari um, created new digital sneakers line for the virtual world. What is that about? Can you tell us? Yeah. So again, we, no one knows exactly, you know, what is going to happen and where this is going just because we are innovating. So as a consumer, you say, I like it, I don't like it. Um, but when you run the business and when you run a, a brand, Atari or any other brand, a small brand, big brand, small studio, big studio, you try to innovate, you try to, to map you know, your plan. Um, and I think this is, these sneakers were part of the, you know, us trying to plant uh, or define our roadmap, uh, making sure that you know, we would, we would see, we would test, maybe it would work, maybe it would not work, but at least we would give it a try. I've done personally between my two, you know, between 2007 and 2012, I've made games, I've, I've made zombie games. We didn't know this would work. We ended up with hundreds of thousands, I'm not joking, hundreds of thousands of players. And we were just like pleasantly surprised. And there were other games where we had put, you know, a heart into the, into the, the the game and we would have like a modest audience right mm. so i think that these sneakers they, this is just part of the uh, the roadmap this is part of the experience you try uh if it works fine you double the investment and if it doesn't work okay you just come back on the trail and you keep trying that's it so here we were very happy it was a very nice uh, nft very cool um and i, I think that people really enjoy them and uh, so now, like looking, going back to this Atari uh, sneaker. So, so what did you actually launch? So that's an NF. Is that an NFT? Yeah, it's an NFT for the moment. Yes, uh, the the plan down the road would be when there's a metaverse, maybe people would be able to wear it. And mm -hmm. we uh, there is no plan to make a, an actual uh, shoe. Okay, and it's it's possible to buy with Atari token as well. At the time, yes. Yeah, yes. I think they're now they have been uh, they have been sold out, so it's uh, it's over. Yeah. Now, like looking at the overall Atari chain ecosystem, can you give us an overview of the of the ecosystem where the Atari token is used um, and uh, where users can find the token also? So it's still a, you know it's a long it, it's a long road. Uh, we're still at the very very beginning. The 
the first thing that we are doing is that we are rolling out some very simple use cases like these NFTs, more NFTs coming. Uh, yes, we have uh, we've been working on the casino. We keep adding games. Yes, we had announced it uh, for an earlier launch, and then we decided to add more games, so we delayed it because we had other priorities. Um, so for the moment, we are doing um, everything we can in terms of use cases on the one end, and on the other end, we're adding liquidity in the ecosystem. The plan down the road is to keep adding more use cases, and we are using the tokens to basically help sponsor more projects, more games. Um, we have announced the same thing. We, we've signed a deal with Zed, uh, Z-E-D dot run, the horse uh, racing you know, uh, website on the blockchain. We are mm -hmm. very, very cool guys. We know what they are doing. Um, they had to basically redraft or change some of their backend. So they were late in releasing the, the Atari horses and the, the Atari experience, but they, just, they are still around. We, we keep, they keep pushing. We all keep pushing. So I think the, the goal right now is uh, on the one end to have very simple uh, use cases, limited, and then to grow the complexity of these use cases over time. Uh, you buy an NFT today, you can just keep it or resell it. Tomorrow, the idea, the idea is that you buy the NFT and then you can use it in an online world, right? Um, so that's, uh, this is the type of things that, uh, you know, we keep pushing and we keep helping. Everyone is helping each other, right? Because... Right now, it's more important for everyone to 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 make sure that things are delivered and things do work. Um, that's the this is what what the, the 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 mindset is right now. It's just we 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 learn, we fail, we come back, um, and then we keep the ball rolling. Yeah, keeping your, the ball rolling. I think you you pushed um, the overall um, idea out early on, and I think you launched a token um, to last. Uh, quarter of 2020 so yeah. um, as you said like six months or a little bit more now in in the market how big is the community at the moment and where are the the biggest fans is it us europe or asia i i, um, I think it's more uh, europe and asia right now um because we haven't pushed a lot in the us and you see i think uh, i'm gonna say it super loud um i think it's It's always the same uh, when I, I do these AMAs. I try to do them every every week, and I, I take it as part of the job. So, but I'm going to say it, and, and I see some of the questions about when a jury will be listed on exchanges, when on Binance. It is not only our decision, right? So, I think for everyone asking this question, it means that they don't understand that all. And I'm not saying we're talking to that exchange or that other exchange, but I can't comment. If you're asking me, if someone is asking me the question, it means that the person does not really understand what the non-disclosure agreement is. And I am not going to uh, go against a non-disclosure agreement that we have signed. So I can't comment on the listing. What I've always said is that the moment we can announce it, we will announce it. Okay. And that the second thing I've said is that we keep working on listings. Done. There's nothing else I can say. There's nothing else I can say. Otherwise, I would be in breach of a non-confidentiality agreement. Yeah. We're talking to to exchanges. Fine, yes, that I can say. Which ones I can't say. When will be when will this be done? No clue because it's not only our decision. There's a process. We follow the process. Done. So again, I think it's there's a lot of differences in terms of maturity in the audience. Uh, but sometimes you know I have to repeat 20 times the same thing just to to get it heard. It is what it is. I take it. This is part of the job. I have no problem with that. And I, I will just keep repeating it. But I will never yeah. be in breach of uh, NDAs, non-confidentiality agreements. No way. So I'm not going to make any comment on these listings. Okay. But like from a uh, chain analysis, I think you have more than 13,000 holders now of the token. Yeah. I think that's a big achievement <laughs> since uh, since the six months. Um, and all, also there are like a lot of trading happening so there is some excitement around around the topic how do you see, yeah you know good no. good um so i wanted to ask how do you see the overall blockchain gaming industry evolving so beyond uh, atari as one of the players but how big is the market now and how will it be in five years so i'm not going to give like a, you know a number but i think the first you're going to i think there are two trends One, you're going to see more and more games, new types of games on the blockchain. 
city building games. We already have, but they're going to be better. Um, you're going to see games that are just purely blockchain based. Okay, that's the first trend I see, and I think that the the other trend is that even in non-blockchain based games, if you take, and I'm not going to give a name, but if you take any game on PlayStation, any game on Xbox, any game maybe uh, in the App Store, there will be also in these games, there will be a layer to blockchain or some experience on the blockchain, for instance, for you know trading some weapons, trading some um, costumes, some avatars, some uh, outfits, some special cars, because the blockchain gives you two big things, traceability and security. You know that this is a real one. You can trace it and security. Yes, you know that you have one of the, you know, 100 cars are there. So I think every game, and there's a second big, big trend, every game will need to include in one form of an hour or another a type of blockchain-based experience. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think the, the overall market will grow and it's for sure that a lot of blockchain um, solutions will be implemented in games. So I see there's a thriving, a big, big opportunity in future. Um, yeah. And what are the, the main key drivers of the industry um, from like this vision, which where we are today with some early implementations to like this growth? What are the key drivers from your perspective? For me, it's just a blockchain adoption. Um, there's no, it, it's, it's going to come on the one end. You're going to have to, you're going to have a push by the, the publishers and a pull uh, from the players. The publishers, because they'll see that, yeah, if we sell some NFTs, we'll make more money. And if we put NFTs in the games, it's going to be more interesting. And then uh, from the players, because they will want, again, security and trustability. Uh, of all of that and this is really for me the the, the most 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 important thing it, it will come from um it will come from uh, everyone uh from all angles yes and as an entrepreneur i mean you have been um there my video got stuck somehow uh there i am um so as an entrepreneur what are your key lessons over this uh, atari journey you had been doing so far and uh, how do you apply these lessons now to what you're building with atari blockchain I, I think the you know there are many many lessons but i think that if you want to summarize them one is you you know that you, you're not going to hit success with the with the first try or with the first game uh because it's just impossible it would be like a fluke right uh, extraordinary um uh, strike of luck uh, it's just impossible. So it's very important that you don't put all your eggs in the, not in the same basket, but you don't go all in, you know, with one project. You just want to be able to, to stay at the poker table, just if I use that uh, analogy. So I think it's super important that you, 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 you stay on ball and then you say, okay, I'm not going to, to, to hit success, you know, with the first try. And the second thing is you have to kill we are all optimistic, right? We are all we all believe in these in these games, in this business, because otherwise I would be selling insurance policies, right? I would be doing I would be in a different business. But I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that when you've made a mistake, it's better to kill the project as quickly as practicable and say, yeah. look, it's not working. We made a mistake, let's swallow it. It's it's the other side of the coin of not going all in, but also to, to recognize that, yes, you make mistakes. Maybe the project and everyone loves this game, but frankly, it's not going to see, you know, the, the, the success. So let's kill it now and let's um, reallocate our, our resources and time and efforts and passion onto something else. Um, because usually it saves you a lot of money. So these are more like defensive defensive remarks, right? Saying, don't go all in and kill the project. Don't hesitate to, to acknowledge that you've made a mistake um, and kill the project quickly, <laughs> uh, rather, you know, uh, quickly than uh, too late. So I think mm -hmm. this is really for me the, 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 this is really for me the most important thing. Okay, 
And I mean, in the startup world, they're just saying, in quote, move fast and break things. And at the same time, like fail fast and but don't repeat your, your failures. But in, in the blockchain space, um, due to regulation and, and compliance, it's not good. It's not a good idea to break all the things and to fail no. on, on regulatory and compliance. So what's your opinion and, and what's the importance of compliance when you look at blockchain gaming? I think it's, it really depends on, you know, the type of game uh, that you, you're working on. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's better to be second mover because you learn from the mistakes. So I think it's, again, it's back to, let's make sure that you understand what you're doing. Let's make sure that you, I don't want to say you're humble, but let's make sure that you, you acknowledge that, yes, you may not be right. Um, and I think that um, for me, this is, this is really the lesson here. Um, making sure that, you know, just deal with the reality at the end of the day. And, you know, there's only one Spielberg, so I'm not Spielberg and that's it. It is what it is. So deal with the reality and then just, uh, there's no point in trying to go fast, trying to go slow. It's, uh, you just have to deal with the reality and maybe it's, sometimes it's good to move fast, sometimes it's not good at all, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's it. But but I think you've done a good job in terms of the token uh, sale and everything to follow a compliant route uh, with uh, everything you you invested in in terms of uh, making it a compliant token sale uh, and and so far. But um, now, like looking at at uh, kind of the core of Atari, there's this console uh, being announced a while ago. What's the status of the console? As of now, so that, that's not a toy question. So the consoles have uh, have been rolled out already. They, they are sold out. Um, it's not a console. So I saw like there was a review. Uh, I think it was on PC Gamer, and the guy was just like, "Oh, this is a bad console." It's not a console. It's a computer. <laughs> okay. Nothing is completely different. It's a computer. It it has eight gig of memory. It's open base. You can customize it. You can add as much memory as you want. You can install install any operating system you want, uh, yeah. but as long as it's compatible with Linux, it is not a console. So it's hybrid in the sense that it's a computer and mm -hmm. there's also an environment which is curated by Atari. So it's, yes, it looks like a console, but at the heart it is a computer, right? So, and a computer with eight gigs of memory, mm -hmm. uh, Linux based, you can install any operating system you want for $350. Be my guess, there's no such computer out there. So it's exciting. And then like on the console, there will be also, or will there be also um, blockchain games or- Yeah, yeah. in, in, in the store, we are working on it. Yes, yes, we are working on this, definitely. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it's, so a, it's a good, it's a very good computer. I created it. It's a very good computer and it's not a console. <laughs> Okay, now when we look at the roadmap of Atari chain and the whole Atari blockchain development, what are the highlights if you look at the, at the current roadmap um, for like the next year or two ahead? So we've just released the wallet. We've just released the, the decentralized exchange. Um, again, we were just rolling out now. So this is done. The, um, the, first road, the first items on the roadmap will be more and more use cases, NFTs. That's uh, definitely uh, the first thing. The second is more liquidity. Is it by additional listings um, or, you know, making sure that on Uniswap, everything is working fine. So that's the second, um, that, that's the second big, big, big angle. And the third one is, of course, the uh, DHI, uh, more DHI metaverse. Uh, there's no, mm -hmm. as I've said, there is no date for the moment, but uh, we've just delivered the wallet. We've just delivered today the, uh, the exchange. Uh, more use cases, more NFTs. Uh, you're going to see some announcements in July, in August, and then um, more liquidity, hopefully, with some announcements in July. And finally, the, the metaverse. It's already a lot, you know, a lot of things to do. Uh, we just want to take them one by one and deliver. And that's the most mm -hmm. important. Now, then, you also made clear that there's a, a, a new structure, and I think they're just like this week, they had been this. This uh, restructuring uh, announcement. If you look at the Atari Group, what? Uh, how will you make sure that um, things work together? Because I think that the Atari token is cr 
cross group it should be kind of functional across it so um how how big is the team now at the tari group and how are they working all together in terms of the different departments no no everything is uh, it's very seamless uh such as you know we we grant licenses here and there so the new license has been granted to a company, so it's uh, also very, very, very seamless. Uh, there mm -hmm. There's absolutely no, you know, no issue. The, the token is uh, is living on its own. It's an ERC20 token. It's uh, everyone can just uh, transfer it from a wallet to another wallet. There's no need of uh, nobody else. So I think it's super, super seamless. And again, I think the goal is to have a, a, an ecosystem that is as broad as possible. And um, this is, you know, again, we had two options. Option one, only one website, one application. You could only find the Atari assets and the token there. Or we go broad, and we decided to go as broad as possible. So it's going to be, at the end of the day, you, some may say, oh, I don't understand why we are doing this, why that. But things move at a different pace. But at the end of the day, the goal and the strategy is to go as broad as possible. Mm -hmm. Then you also kind of mentioned very briefly the Atari Casino. And um, can you explain what is the Atari Casino? What do you plan to build there? So we, again, I, I, I was playing with the, the casino uh, earlier this week. We, you know, we got caught in a situation where we had something and then we decided to go to the next level to have something uh, very, very, very interesting. And yes, when you go back to the drawing board, it takes more time. So I think on the one hand, you're going to see some very traditional games, casino games, of course, on the blockchain. And on the other end, we were looking at adding, you know, things like lottery on the blockchain. So yes, we have to secure licenses. Or we are looking at no, new types of games uh, on the blockchain. I mean, I like Crash, for instance. I like playing the Crash game. Uh, but f things like this, yes. Mm -hmm. And... Now, like if you look at uh, like all the all the demands from from your community, uh, what's the difference now? You had been, or probably one step back. Like in your history as an as an executive and manager, you had been dealing with your board, with uh, VC investors in the past, and now you have token holders and a community. What's the key difference here between kind of stakeholder management between your community and kind of the previous traditional stakeholders in, in, in a corporation? We don't treat them uh, differently. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's uh, it's really on the one end giving them, you know, the information that we can give them because we are subject to NDA. Saigon also, it's funny because I'm reading some uh, some of the questions in French and uh, there's a guy who is completely wrong. We've met everyone <laughs> on the, the blockchain. So second thing is basically debunking all these conspiracy theories and people we just we basically cannot live or can only live because of the brand, right? Meaning for them, they have to basically find a way to, to attach themselves to the toy brand, otherwise they have no existence. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's also explaining that, yes, this is the truth because we are regulated, we make statements, we sign with our blood. And yes, you can have also interviews with, with some tabloids and you should not listen to them because this is incorrect. Okay, but so that's the yeah. second thing that we are doing. And the third thing, you know, people love to, to have perspective. And we also have some uh, some limitations, some regulations that do apply to us as uh, listed companies. So we are just, uh, you know, uh, trying to apply the same rules to everybody. Yes, that's that's the rule. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic approach. Um, from my perspective, I think the dynamics are a dramatic difference. So, you know, VCs invested in founders, and now. Uh, investors are investing in communities and the strengths of, of a community and also the kind of communication channels from like 10 years ago to now are so, so different having the Telegram chats and the Discord chats and the Twitter discussions and everything. This is really bringing the closeness or bringing the community closer to you and to the management team. For, so for us at LTX, it's very important to go back to community in terms of feedback, listening to them, suggestions. We always look at all the ideas. And I think that's that's yeah much, much different than building a company 10 years ago. 
Um, so that, that's very exciting. And in, in terms of rumors and, and things, uh, uh, we, we noticed that there are some rumors around this Ronaldinho uh, partnership there. What can you tell us about this? No, it was just, we're starting. <laughs> this is just a start. So we saw him in a, in a Tauri Trico or, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that was yeah a... just a start, yes, definitely. Okay, but there's more coming. Working on it every day. Okay, excellent. So let's look at, back at the community. Uh, again, like we want your questions. You can ask, uh, ask us anything. I'll pick uh, the best questions here. Um, well, let me of address course. a few one because there's this guy who speaks in French. This is wrong. We've paid everybody. The architect didn't left the project. Whoever is right to, is behind is hiding behind Alan Pelator. He's just completely wrong. Uh, otherwise, no. as a listed company, we, we would have had to make a disclosure. So we're no. not talking here, you know, writing a, a message in the chat. I'm talking about disclosures on a regulated market with sanctions if I don't tell the, the truth, right? So he did not deliver. Done. We paid yeah. everything we bought for this guy. End of story. Next. Um, yeah, I think that's it, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, in, in terms of Atari's... Um, assets you would say there is of course pong is very known but what are the the, the most exciting uh, licenses or assets uh, within the atari ecosystem and which one do you think are potentially something interesting also to combine with with blockchain enabled systems i, I think look we've tried uh, you know we've started with some uh, box covers nfts i think for me the as far as i'm concerned um what I'm really trying to, to, to deliver is really a broader experience on the blockchain with a, a type of city building game. This mm -hmm. is um, very, you know, this is what uh, driving me. Um, and this is really what I would like to deliver. I think that, you know, city building games are pretty, lend them, they lend them, themselves pretty much to the blockchain. That's one. Everything that's about collection, everything that's about building, crafting, I think this is uh, super interesting with the blockchain. So we have like games, you know, um, and I, I don't want to give you any name or in particular because I, I would be, you know, revealing a, a project, but every every game, every type of game that lends itself to uh, blockchain, to, to building, to collecting, I think, um, you know, that's super interesting on, on the blockchain. You know, I like, for instance, uh, I'd love to to build cars on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's already, of course, some games out there. We we work with Animoca on uh, on Formula One, uh, but you know, every, every everything that's about crafting and building, I think that's pretty 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 amazing. I mean, it's much more interesting on the blockchain than just in a in a regular game. Of course. So I assume from um, what I've seen is that if you create something on the blockchain, it could be also like a virtual item which you could then sell or trade or or send to a friend or something like that. And it's very exactly. like, uniquely um, put on, on on the blockchain. That that's right. Um, in in terms of uh, like overall strategy for Atari um, blockchain d development. Um, You've done the, the, the token sale. Will there be additional investors um, joining now from the equity side, or is it only funded with um, the, the utility token so far? Uh, we haven't made any announcement. And, uh, you know, again, it's back to what I was saying earlier today. Uh, we only deal with the reality. At the end of the day, what we want to do is to develop and broaden the Ajoy ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. If it takes a license, if it takes some equity, if it takes some uh, partnerships on the long run, I think, um, again, we deal with the reality. It also depends, you know, on the type of project. Um, I've done a lot of deals with brands, big brands. Um, so I'm more, it's true that I'm more comfortable combining the power, so to say, of one brand with the power and the awareness of another brand. So mm -hmm. this is what I've done, you know, throughout the, the years. Um, yes, I've done some fitness games under license. So I kind of, for me, it's more natural to do that with a, um, with a, a, a brand license agreement. But um, we'll be, at the end of the day, we'll be very, very flexible. You know, you, again, you just don't know what's going to work. So is it equity? Is it a, a long-term agreement on the, on the, with some token? 
is or is it license or combination of all of that? Right now, you have to go with volume, right? It's uh, back to use cases, liquidity, use, use cases, liquidity, and volume. And this mm -hmm. is really um, this is really what is driving the what is driving us for the moment. Yeah, and then also you mentioned that you have um, a thriving partnership um, ecosystem there. Can you tell us what are the most important partners at at the moment, and um, are you planning some more? So yes, we are planning some more, and so far the most important ones. So we have done deals with Wax, Animoca, Sandbox. Um, Uh, Z dot run. I think for me, uh, I hope they're going to be done with their internal work pretty soon, and they will, will be able to to bet <laughs> um, yeah. on on races on, on the blockchain. So there's a full list on, on our website, and again, it comes, it goes up, it goes down. This week might be with someone, next two weeks might be with someone else. Just because it's a cycle, you can't have like a, a horse race every day. You can't have, you know, you need diversity. You need to basically offer, you know, flexible fluidity, so to say, in the experience. So the more partners you have, uh, I think the better. Uh, this has been, you know, the um, uh, the direction and the decision here. And uh, I don't think that this is going to change in the near future. Definitely not. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Sandbox, and there is, seems to be a, a licensing deal or something. Can you explain yeah. how the what you actually did there? Yeah, yeah, it's a deal that uh, I signed like uh, two, two or three years ago. At the beginning, you know, um, we wanted just to 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 help and have our games in some yeah. decentralized world. So that that was a license deal for some certain period of time. Uh, we also have the license deal with Z Dot Run. There's also a license deal, you know, everything that has been announced. Um, and again, these deals are made for a certain period of time when they get renewed, terminated, extended, modified. Um, I think for me, the most important right now is to to try to to find out what the next big trend is, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by this is like you want to have some... Um, to, Up to now, you know, people were satisfied with just buying an NFT. I think down the road and in, in a pretty short run, it's already, I think it's already the case. You want more. So you want to be, to have the NFT, you want to be able to use it and keep it, trade it, but also use it in the world and have, you know, multiple usage um, for your, your tokens. I think this is really for me the big trend here. Uh, being yeah. able to basically place the NFT in the world in a, in, a, in a virtual world and see things happening. Um, and there is a good question here, um, which I want to pick out from the community from Lorenzo. Good evening. Um, is it possible and do you think it's a good idea to promote a Atari token, ATRI, as a meme token worldwide? I don't think so. Um, again, we are not a security token. There are regulations. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, yeah, but I think that this hype around Dogecoin and everything, you know, some of these meme tokens don't have any value and no utility, nothing. Like they're just uh, for, for, for fun and, and memes. So, um, well, I think Atari certainly has the kind of the brand power already. Um, and I've seen some. I don't some... think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but um, let's take, uh, let's look at another uh, question here from Josh. Since we're talking investors, when is the financial report going to post? There's nothing guidance on the investor, Atari investor website or data or anything like that. I think there is a date. I'm not, uh, I'm no longer part taking uh, mm -hmm. responsibility for this. It was my uh, job at, and, until the end of March. I think there's a date. And again, the, the answer is in the question. We are getting very close to time. Yeah, we are not yeah. late, done. Okay, so but there's also a, a difference. There's Atari, which is a, a public company, isn't it? Yeah. Like at uh, at Euronext, so you have a publication uh, deadlines and, and and these things. And then there's the Atari chain, and um, now Atari token holders. Um, so will there be a separate kind of investor or like token uh, information deck or something like that? No, no. You have the, the website of Atari chain. That's uh -huh. it. Um, you, you have a website on the Atari chain, 
and you have the you have the website for Atari, the public company. Atari chain is just a subsidiary of a, a Atari SA. Yeah. And then um, will the uh, Atari the financial report from the company also include um, it, all everything around the blockchain activities? Yes, yes. You apply okay. the accounting rules. Yes. Yeah. So you and then, we um, the early accounting rules. Yeah. There's this okay. question here from Kichu. Um, I read the news that Atari will be delisting from Nasdaq. I want to turn around. Like, where is, uh, yeah, where is the, show Atari me the listed at all? Like, it's I, I know it's at Euronext, correct? I don't know. Show me the article. I don't have it. Yeah, I'm just picking up picking up the question. So my question to no, you, finance, Atari is, delisting. We are not listing on the NASDAQ again. This is just like debunking these theories. Yeah. But we, you are listed at Euronext, correct? Atari is not listed on the NASDAQ. So the question is wrong. OK. Uh, there's a link. Show me. Yeah. Show me. But Show me. You are let's, listed let's, at Euro, let's, go, let's go to the bottom of it. You'll see that. Okay. Let, please uh, open the link. Link attached. Uh, let's deal with it. Yeah, let me check. I can't open the link here directly. Um, let's have a look here. Should send it to me? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no link here. Okay, anyway, I think... Um, no, 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 but this is very important because this is a community. So let's go to the bottom of it. You have someone yeah. here saying, let's go to the bottom of it. Show me the link. <laughs> Kishu okay. Smalley, whoever is hiding behind the... Show me the link. I have time. Um, Otherwise, yeah. you're going to have a lot of people saying, oh, it's always going to be delisted. Ah, Show me here. the link. Yeah. Look at this. I, I could not find the, the link from the, from the user, but there is uh, actually this news here from June 24th. Atari plans to apply for delisting from NASDAQ. First North growth market stock is different. It's uh, it does it's not on, it's not the Nasdaq. It's First North, mm -hmm. and it's not Atari willing being sanctioned. It's a decision made by Atari to remove some Swedish depository receipts for which there was no volume, and to basically get the depository receipts and give them the the usual Atari shares. Okay, so. To answer this question, it's not Atari shares, but it's here. Delisting it's of company Swedish depository receipt. What's that, Fred? It's, it was basically, a, um, it's just like ADRs. It was basically some Swedish, it was some Swedish depository receipts, which were issued in Sweden two or three years ago, and there was no volume. So the company decided to take the depository receipts back and to give the usual Atari shares in exchange. That's it. Okay. Okay. It was Excellent. By the company. It was today. Yeah. So here's the here's the news. I just realized it's not the Nas it's not the so again it's not the Nasdaq. It's Nasdaq first North Growth Market Stockholm. So it's the Nasdaq in Sweden. It's not the Nasdaq because we are not listed on the Nasdaq. Okay, good. Yeah, Fred, good to going into detail. On no, this thing. again, it's going But as we are wrapping up uh, this session, can you tell us, I'm always asking um, my guests, what are the key three trends in the industry you see and how they impact Atari and your operations? Uh, new types of games on the blockchain, mm -hmm. reshuffling of cards, Meaning every time there's a new platform, there's a new re there's a reshuffling of the cards, so you have uh, the possibility to take big positions. And three, I think that the a blockchain layer will be in 90% of the game in the next three to five years. Why three to five years? Because it takes two years to make a big game uh, minimum. So I think, but you'll see in three to five years, you will see some blockchain layers in. Uh, I don't want to again. I don't want to give you a name because I don't want to make a bet. But in the in the most of the triple A games, you will see some blockchain layers, and you will be able to buy a car and sell it back on the blockchain. I think so. And for me, it's more important to be part of the online world mm -hmm. um, and make sure that 
we try to go beyond you know the simple nft and we go to something which is nft with multiple usages down the road perfect thanks for these three trends so now we're at the end but there's one more last thing and uh, somebody here in the community got a good question here will there be atari token listed at the else exchange what do you think uh, you tell me <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's our one last uh, thing, one more thing here in our session. We want to announce a Tari token will be listed at the LCX exchange. The announcement will actually go out right like in four minutes uh, uh, right after our show. And then the deposits will be open right away. And trading will start tomorrow with an Atari ATRI LCX pair and then Atari Euro pair on Saturday. So you can now, um, in the next couple of minutes, go to lcx.com and deposit your Atari token. And then as of tomorrow, get started with trading and then also acquire Atari tokens uh, and invest or uh, become a token holder of the Atari ecosystem. I think that's very, very exciting. Strengthening the token ecosystem with another regulated and compliant exchange in the heart of Europe. Um, so we are very proud to have you here on board. Thank you so much. Thanks for the help. Thanks for the, uh, the push. Yeah, can't wait. Excellent. So now I can say, community, you can, if you want more news, uh, you can go to our Twitter account at LCX, or you can uh, look at our website, lcx.com slash insights. And of course, most important, you have to sign up at uh, lcx.com, go to the register and login button and then sign up for an account for LCX Exchange and get started trading Atari token. So with that, any final words to community, Fred? No, all good. So thanks for everyone. Thanks for the support. And I think, you know, in addition to crypto trading, the fact that there is a, what I call a fiat on-ramp or fiat ga gateway on, the, on LCX is uh, definitely a big advantage. So that's great. Thank you. Thanks for the support, Monty. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all for watching. Super exciting. Onwards and upwards. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. This is LCX Insights Live. For more insights, please visit lcx.com forward slash insights and follow us on Twitter at LCX. Onwards and upwards.